All right. Well, everybody's still logging in. Thank you, everybody, for joining today. Um, it looks like we have most people here at this point, so we'll go ahead and get started. Thank you, everybody, for joining us for the UCS Continuing Professional Education Geographic Information Systems GIS Information Session. Um, so I'll go ahead and start by going through some introductions. On the screen, you will see. Oops, on the screen, you'll see. Um, my name, as well as our program director's name, my name is Rosa Ranta, and I'm the program manager for GIS courses here at UC Davis Continuing and Professional Education, or CPE, as we will refer to it throughout the session today. Also joining us today is our program director, Monica Jackson. Monica oversees Continuing Professional Education's Land Use and Natural Resources courses, with which this GIS program is housed under. A bit later, we'll also hear from our instructor, Dr. Karen Beardsley. Dr. Beardsley is one of our instructors and will be teaching um, our upcoming introduction to GIS course in the fall. However, she just wrapped up one this spring as well. Um, in addition to her role as instructor with CPE, Karen is also the director of professional programs at UC Davis School of Affairs. So she does a couple of work in multiple places. Um, on the screen, you'll see an agenda. Uh, let's take a look at it just to go over what you can expect during today's information session. You will go through a brief introduction to UC Davis Continuing Professional Education. We'll review our mission and our history, and then we'll get into some specifics of Continuing Professional Education's GIS programs available both domestically and internationally. Uh, last but not least, we'll go through a brief um, last but not least, we'll hear from Dr. Karen Beardsley uh, before we wrap up some questions and answers. Um, before we dive into our presentation, um, just a couple of housekeeping notes. Please feel free to utilize the question and answer function at the bottom of your screen, or you can send us a question in the chat box. We'll be answering your questions throughout the end of our session today. So just if you don't see us respond immediately, it's because we're going to answer them towards the end. Um, all of our attendees today will also be getting an email with a follow-up to the recording so you can come back and revisit it whenever you want. Uh, so in order to get a sense of where everyone is in their learning journey, because everybody is on different learning journeys, let's take a quick poll. How many of us have taken classes here at UC Davis Continuing Professional Education, formerly UC Davis Extension before? Um, if you take any course with UC Davis Extension before, that would also count. Just give me one second while I launch that poll. We'll give it a moment just for everybody to fill that out. Okay, it looks like a majority of uh, those of us joining today are new to UC Davis Continuing Professional Education. Uh, thank you, welcome. We would love to meet new people. Uh, for those of you that have taken a course with us before, thank you again for joining us and we hope to see you in more classes soon. Uh, so a bit of background about UC Davis Continuing Professional Education to get everyone familiarized with those of you who, uh, on who we are and what we offer. We are the lifelong learning arm of UC Davis and we provide learning opportunities that transform people, organizations, and communities. We have been providing quality continuing education programs for more than 50 years with more than 62,000 annual enrollments. We serve students locally and nationwide with enrollments in, from all 50 states and over 100 countries. As we mentioned earlier, we also have an international GIS program on Coursera, which we'll go over in just a moment. So now that we know, you know a little bit more about us, we'd like to know a little bit more about you as well via a new poll um, we'll brought to you, you to this information session today. In one second, we'll watch that poll. One moment. Okay, so on the screen, you should see 
um, professional development as an option. Some of you might be looking for career change. Some of you might be like myself and you just like enjoy learning and want to expand your knowledge. Um, some of you might have a friend or a colleague that recommended this program and some of you might be here for another reason. Go ahead and fill that out. So it looks like most of us today are joining um, because you're interested in professional development. Um, some of you are also looking for career change and uh, it looks like there's a variety of reasons why you know, you are brought here today and we're just glad that you joined us and we hope that the information we provide today is going to be of value to you. Moving on. Before we jump into our programs as a refresher, let's define what a geographic information system is, GIS. GIS is a powerful data tool that can be used in different fields and industries. Those who use GIS typically use it to visualize and analyze data to understand relationship patterns and trends. As we mentioned, GIS is a tool because of that, its uses are vast and nearly infinite. Uh, a couple of examples are the coronavirus, um, I'm sorry, the Coronavirus Resource Center at John Hopkins University. Um, that dashboard, which has just been archived, that was using a GIS tool. Um, so that tool was to track the confirmed cases of COVID-19 by county and by U.S. county, uh, by country rather, and U.S. county. Another example is to track historical redlining data that can help the public understand how historical inequalities still contribute today. About our GIS programs, CPE has GIS program and a GIS specialization. Both of those options are taught by industry professionals as well as academic staff. Some of the courses covered in our GIS program address a variety of topics from using GIS to cannabis, um, sorry, for using GIS for cannabis regulation to Python programming for GIS. Our courses are accessible for both domestic US students and those internationally as well. Our courses have two audiences, those who are new to GIS and those with some experience that are just looking to further their skill set. Um, our GIS program courses are open to the general public and our short term, term courses most range from one to two weeks from environmental agriculture and natural resource management to real estate, engineering, city planning, and public health. The use of GIS has become a necessary tool in many professions. We offer beginning and intermediate and advanced courses to give students hands-on experience with our GIS software packages and the practical skills such as database management, Python programming, and cartographic design necessary to become an effective GIS specialist. We recommend that Anyone who has a very limited GIS background, so those of you that might have mentioned that you're looking for career change, um, to start off with our Introduction to GIS course, which will next be taught online on July 18th through the 27th. This course is a great resource for you to get used to the um, fundamentals of GIS and can, how it can be applied and as a primer for Esri ArcGIS Pro software. Um, if those of you are not interested in learning in an online capacity, we also have our Introduction to GIS course offered in person next with Karen Beardsley on the screen. We'll have her teaching this course in fall. Um, some additional courses that we have coming up that you'll see on the screen are using GIS for Cannabis Regulation, which will be online from June 1st through the 2nd. We also have Introduction to Open Source GIS, which is July 6th through the 7th. And lastly, for, we'll also have our using GIS for emergency services, which will be September 11th through the 15th. Uh, now we have a new poll for you. CP would like to know if you're interested in receiving a digital badge. A digital badge is a graphic verification of the skills you have mastered after successfully completing a specific course or program. Digital badges are a way to share your educational achievements and new competencies with employers, colleagues, friends, and family via social platforms such as LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. And we'll go ahead and give you a moment to fill that out. Thank you everybody for filling that out. Um, 
it's ranging from yes to some of you that might need a little bit more time to think about it and some of you that are unsure. Thank you so much for sharing your information for us and don't give, you, give us thought for fodder. Moving on. As we mentioned before, we have an option for our international students. Our GIS specialization on Coursera consists of an asynchronous series of courses um, on Coursera, which is an online learning platform. We recommend this option if you or someone you know are internationally based. There are five required courses, which include a geospatial analysis project, which serves as the capstone to build on concepts learned in a series of courses, and each course is about four weeks long. Just a brief note on that, we are restructuring our JS specialization to bring in new and exciting features, um, and we're switching it to our GIS Pro as well. So it'll be uh, a lot of fun stuff coming up in the future, so stay tuned. Um, by now you may be thinking, this sounds awesome, but can I get a discount, Ruth? We do offer discounts on most of our courses and you can learn more about these on our website. But we've highlighted a few here. Members of the Cal Aggie Alumni Association enjoy $50 off our courses. Note that this is a reciprocal benefit that extends to members of the UC Alumni Association. Our professional partners receive a 10% discount as well as groups of three or more that are enrolling in the same class at the same time with the same payment method. If you have a few colleagues that you may be looking into taking the same course together, make sure you coordinate your enrollment so you can get that 10% off. Uh, as a reminder, there's a full list of discounts available on our website. To thank you for attending today, you will be emailed out a $100 coupon that is good for one-time use by new students only and, um, and good for any course. This coupon does expire, so please be sure to use it before May 1st, 2024, lasts for one year. Just be sure about that. We also have some student aid available and folks who are standing by to help with those kind of questions. You can reach them via email at cpeinfo at ucdavis.edu or by phone number listed here. For specific questions about the Workforce Investment Act, uh, Opportunity Act, WIOA, AmeriCorps Educational Award, Veterans Benefits, the GI Bill, and or student and personal loans, you can direct those to Suzette Odom. If you have additional questions regarding how to finance your education, please visit the URL listed on the screen. Moving on to our guest speaker, Dr. Karen Beardsley. As I mentioned before, Dr. Beardsley is one of our GIS instructors that teaches introduction to GIS as well as our advanced GIS course. Karen has taught GIS with CPE since 1996 when she helped develop our first GIS course offering. Karen received her PhD in geography from UC Davis and has worked at UC Davis since 1994 as a researcher and GIS specialist. She currently serves as a director of global professional programs with Global Affairs Office at UC Davis. Her interests include applications of GIS and other geospatial technologies to biodiversity protection and land use planning, as well as developing international connections and opportunities for UC Davis students, scholars, and faculty around the world. Thank you for joining us today, Karen. Well, great to be here. I don't know if you wanted to have my video on or not, but I'm not allowed to turn it on, so. <laughs> no problem. We can I'm hear getting, you loud I'm and getting clear. a message saying I can't turn my video on. <laughs> we can hear you loud and clear and we see your face on the screen as well. So. Okay, good enough. <laughs> All right, that's fine. Just wondering why you had that turn off. Well, anyway, it's great to be here today. Thank you and, and hello everyone who's joined joined this uh, webinar. It's nice to hear all the various information about the programs that you have here. Um, I did note, Ruth, that there, someone had asked a question about the difference between um, a GIS program and a GIS certification. So I don't know if you wanted to answer that now before I go, before I talk or save that for a little later. We can save that for later. Okay. I just wanted to note that there was a question okay. out there. Great. Okay. Well, um, um, nice to be here. I know Ruth already kind of uh, gave an introduction. Uh, do you want me to just kind of jump in and introduce I'll, myself? Did you have some questions for me? I do have some questions for you. So I'll start off with our first one. Okay. Uh, so can you please tell us about your experience relating to GIS, which might segue into an introduction to yourself? Great. Yeah, I guess, I guess because uh, I always like to say that GIS found me or I fell into GIS because uh, it's not something that I went looking for. Um, back in 1989, 
uh, when I finished up as a Peace Corps volunteer in Kenya, I, uh, I had had a degree of background in math and computer science, and then I'd been a, a teacher in Kenya teaching um, math and science and English in a high school level. I, I thought, gosh, I want to get involved in some conservation work. And there was uh, this possibility to work on estimating elephant populations uh, for the African continent. And the only thing is that I had to know how to use GIS. So I had no idea even what GIS was, but I accepted the, the offer and the position. I got a couple of weeks of training back in, in uh, at the Esri headquarters in Redlands, California. And I went and worked on this project and I guess I've been hooked ever since. Um, I So I worked uh, for about a year. Uh, I, I went and did the project on elephants and then I worked for another year on GIS projects with the state of California. And then I went and got my master's degree at UC Santa Barbara um, in, uh, and finished that in like 1993. And then I came to UC Davis and I basically have been working there ever since. Uh, I got my PhD at UC Davis. I was working in the Department of Environmental Science and Policy for many years. Uh, that's when I actually was asked to, to put together, as Ruth mentioned, the first GIS class for CPE. So very excited to have been there at the very beginning. And um, I worked for close to 20 years uh, leading a research group uh, called the Information Center for the Environment at UC Davis. Uh, I then, um, and again, got my PhD during that time. And then in, in 2015, I, I kind of decided I needed to do something a little bit different. And I applied for a Fulbright uh, to teach and set up a GIS system and curriculum in the small mountainous Himalayan country known as Bhutan, if anyone has heard of that. So my family and I went and lived in Bhutan for a year and I uh, worked um, teaching GIS and and working with a lot of the, um, the local uh, government entities and in, in get, gaining capacity in GIS. And now I actually teach, I've taught the, uh, the upper division GI, intro GIS class uh, for UC Davis a couple of summers during the pandemic. And before that, I actually took a UC Davis study abroad program to Bhutan and led uh, for four weeks would teach the GIS class there. And I'm doing that again, thankfully, finally, this, this summer, I'm going back again to Bhutan, taking 19 uh, UC Davis students um, back to the college where I was a Fulbright scholar and um, will be teaching them GIS there uh, in August and September. So uh, kind of a long career, really focused on, on GIS and, and I've been teaching on and off for CPE. That's the next question. How long have you been teaching for CPE? I know you're gonna ask me that question, Ruth. So I'm gonna get ahead of the game. I appreciate and, it. <laughs> um, yeah, so we started that class uh, in 95 or 96, somewhere around there. So been a long, a long stretch. And of course the software has changed and the class has changed over those years, but it's still, really important, I think, to uh, to be able to share this technology and really build um, the capacity of people who work for states, you know, nonprofits, private companies, but to be able to get this adult learning uh, with GIS uh, uh, is, is a, it's really a valuable tool to have in your, in your repertoire. So really excited to be continuing that work. Awesome. Thank you, Karen. Um, so how does your professional experience inform your teaching? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things that really uh, comes to mind about that is that I really feel you can't successfully teach GIS without having, so nobody can, can, nobody can actually have anything to do with GIS without having actually done it themselves. So I really mm -hmm. feel strongly that even if you're in a position of managing people who do GIS or just work with people who, who work on the GIS in your office, it's really important for you to have some level of hands-on experience with the technology. So I think because of all my professional work and working with, with people who were leading projects that had a GIS component, really seeing that when, when those people got a chance to actually experience using the software, even though maybe it's not the thing that they do all the time, they really had a deeper understanding of the capacity of, of, well, the capacity of the people that they were asking to do work, but also just what the software can and cannot do for you and how much, how much is actually involved in it sometimes because 
you know, it's, it's, I remember my, my first job in, in Africa, I was working for this very high level conservation biologist who really thought that I just had to press a magic button and all the answers would just pour out of the machine and all these maps would just appear. If only. Yeah, as if only. So I think just really understanding that, yeah, this is a complex pro program. It's not, it's not out of the reach of anybody really, but there are some things you need to know and there are some best practices involved and it takes time uh, and, and it takes trial and tribulation. So I think um, the other thing is that I, you know, recognize that GIS technology is rapidly changing. It's always mm -hmm. changing. And that, you know, by, by learning a bit about how to use the software, you also then understand as it does change, you're able to adapt better because you have a knowledge of sort of what um, you know, actually what it's like to work with, with the technology. So. Yeah. And you learn, besides that, you learn the interfaces, the various interfaces rather of the software and how that's going to change from platform to platform. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So my next question for you is what emerging trends and applications do you see in GIS? Yeah. I mean, I think one of the things that's happening is, is that, Online and online and cloud computing are becoming more and more prevalent. So it's not just, uh, you know, having a desktop package like ArcGIS Pro, or before that it was Arc, ArcMap, and before that it was ArcView, and 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 you know, and even even some of the other software out there, um, even QGIS, you know, is it, th these things are becoming um, more cloud based uh, because the capacity is there. Uh, everything's also becoming more interoperable. So the ability to work with different types of data on one platform or share information across across platforms and across, across software products even is, is uh, easier and easier and uh, more commonly done as, as time goes on. And, and that's one reason I'm, um, I know we haven't really taught a class yet here in on, ArcGIS Online and online computing, but, um, and, you know, things like story maps where you actually can take all of this information and, and share a story deeply, not just, you know, a couple of pictures and some words, but you can actually let people interact with your data through interactive mapping and those kinds of things. So there's so many, so many capabilities that are helping people do their jobs better and, helping them get messages across. So the, the, there's also the communication side is really becoming more um, prevalent and not, you know, obviously analysis is a huge part of GIS and mm -hmm. also communicating information and the results of analysis. So it doesn't just sit on a bookshelf somewhere. You actually can get that information out to people and let them experience it to some degree. Mm -hmm. And in your in your last introduction at GIS class, um, you mentioned the NASA Mars story map. Yeah, I'd like to chat yeah. a little bit more about that because I found that fascinating, and I looked it up later, and I was playing around on it for a while. Yeah, NASA and Esri came together, and they actually took this vast amount of imagery from Mars, and they they put it onto a platform, so you can you can experience what it would what it's like on the surface of Mars. Uh, because it's all put together in a way that the the system lets you roam around and 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 then you can compare things like uh, different features on Mars to something like the Grand Canyon that we kind of know and understand and you can get a sense of scale of these features on on the Mars on the surface of Mars so yeah that that's just one example of it yeah G GIS, GIS is, is going outer space I know yeah. <laughs> GIS is going everywhere exactly <laughs> Um, we have one question or a couple of questions in the um, question and answer that I think would be great to have as a conversation. Sure. Um, do you think AI is a threat to GIS opportunities um, or GIS jobs in the future? Um, wow. I mean, as much as it's a threat to any job in the future, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think it's any more so because I think you always need a human being uh, to to have the the knowledge that that we have, I think AI can right. be a really great addition to analyzing and pulling together information and bringing um, different choices or different mm -hmm. perspectives that we might not be able to see as easily as 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 um, some some aspects of what AI can do. But I, yeah, I don't mm -hmm. I don't see it as taking over 
the GIS, you know, job market or anything like yeah. that. Again, I, I, I think- see it as a more of a helper. Correct. I agree with you um, in the sense that GIS is also, there's multiple layers in um, that, that are involved in a map. And so a lot of that is very nuanced work and including even just at the base of it, collecting data that's correct. Um, there's only, as, as an individual, there's a lot of work that's involved in making sure and ensuring that data is correct and clean to use from the start um, right. of the project. Yeah, as I always like to tell people when I'm uh, teaching a class is, you know, you you have to make decisions about the data mm-hmm. source that you're putting into the computer because the computer can do, it'll process whatever you give it, but a lot of data may not make sense. It may not be at the right scale. It may not be the right quality. It may not be the right uh, classification system. All those kinds of things are human choices and decisions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, another question that we have is, do you need a bachelor's degree or will a GIS certification suffice to a GIS company and employer? I mean, I think that's going to vary. I, exactly. That's kind of how I Yeah. Feel. I mean, I think it, some places are just going to say you have to have a bachelor's period. I think having a GIS certification is a real bonus in that you're focusing in on the technology and if it's a GIS job. Mm-hmm. Um, but but I can't really, in my experience, I, I can't really answer that question beyond that I I, I um yeah I think the takeaway is that it it varies 100% by employer yeah. to employer um I've definitely seen it before where we've had a student who's worked in the tech industry and then they wanted to switch over and learn GIS from the ground up and ended up getting a GIS specialist position within two years or so so yeah. it's, it definitely varies by um, employer to employer. Exactly. So that's a great yeah. question. Um, yeah. So another question for you. Can you share an experience that you've had when you've engaged with students in the classroom or online? Yeah. I mean, first I, I, I'm the one who really likes to teach in person, um, <laughs> I, as Ruth well knows, because yes. I, I really, I have a hard time teaching online. And I, I, I think maybe partially because I, I had to do it um, in 2020 and 2021. Mm-hmm. And what I really miss is the, just the engagement in a, on a personal level with, with the students I'm working with. So that, I mean, that had to do with UC Davis students, but it's the same with CPE. I actually taught a couple of the classes online as well. I think, I think if you don't live here and it's not possible, online is a great option. Um, but I've just really found, I just, I think some of the questions and some of the, um, well, I, let me just say that I think um, project-based learning is one of the best ways to go. And when I do teach longer courses, um, we have the ability to actually hone it, you know, students can actually do a project. And then, you know, I, I can be there to, to provide guidance in a very personable way um to help with that and the timing is just the timing of a of an online where you have some even when you have some asynchronous work it's just um really really a bit difficult um a couple of things that i will also say though and and i and i've had students do absolutely amazing projects and even the ones online have done amazing projects and i've always had my students um in the longer classes certainly and i'd love to do this in some of the shorter classes too but the ability to take the the information of, that you've put together and even a very, very short GIS project and be able to display that in a way that can be shared with others, such as in a story map or somehow else in ArcGIS Online. Um, so those people really do well with that. And I think it's a great way to, to make sure that your analytical work doesn't go unnoticed or un, you know it can actually have an impact if you can share it and then offer up, you know, what, what do you do now? So the question is, you do this analysis and, and now what, right? What do you want to have come out of that? What do you want the action to be? Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing I want to say is that um, in working a lot with students, particularly in CPE, I always like to say that, you know, sometimes the more mistakes you make, the better you learn it. And I think with right. GIS, um, you know, there can be some cookbook based learning where you're just reading a bunch of instructions and, and as, as much as, I and other instructors probably tell you to understand what you're doing. Don't just click the buttons. You may get to the point where you're just like trying to get through stuff. And I think that, you know, when you make those mistakes and you have to go back and do stuff over again, um, then it really starts to sink in. So Mm -hmm. I almost, I almost, you know, try, I I almost hope that people will make a few mistakes, right? Because I think think the process of going back, because 
Because in the real life, when you're working in GIS, you will always make mistakes. I make mistakes all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's through that sort of stepping back and going, okay, wait a minute, that really didn't seem to work. So let me think through. And, and you just understand your problem better. You understand your data better. And you can, mm -hmm. you know, then you, you really, the learning happens. And then I think you also probably come up with a, a, a better result or conclusion because you've actually gone through an experience where yeah things things can go wrong and now I'm a little more sure about mm -hmm. the answer that I did come up with. Well it narrows down a lot of um the workflow that you do when you make a mistake. Um, <laughs> I, was reading, I was reading an article it was saying when um, the best learning takes place when you make a mistake because it reinforces the learning exactly the, the learning process. Um, so there's there's only happy mistakes in GIS. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what I was, was trying to get across. So yeah, thank you for putting it in those words too. So yeah, exactly. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us, Karen. I'll keep you on here if you have a moment just to stick around in case anybody has any follow-up questions for you. Yeah, I can stay. Okay, Thanks. Perfect. Awesome. All right, moving forward in our conversation. Um, so we have one more poll for you. So we would like to know what is your next step today? Um, are you ready to start and take some of our courses? Um, do you need some more time to think about it? Do you have some lingering questions or do, are you not sure if this program needs your needs? Go ahead and take a moment to fill out that poll. All right, so it looks like um, some of you still need some time to think about it, which is totally fine. We gave you a lot of things to consider, so perfectly understandable. Um, and it looks like some of you might still have some lingering questions. So if you have some questions, you have a couple options. Um, you can ask us questions in the question and answer or in the chat, um, or you can email us. We'll pass along our email momentarily. You can ask us questions there as well. Um, so we've covered a lot today and we want to just take some time for question and answers. Anything that comes up in the chat, we've answered a few already in the question and answer, but let me check in the chat. We did have a question earlier. Let me pull that up. So what is the difference between the GIS program that I mentioned and our GIS specialism? So our GIS program is open to the general public. Those are courses that are offered through CPE at either our classroom facility or online using Canvas. Um, those are some of the courses I mentioned earlier, such as our introduction and GIS course, Advanced GIS, um, that Karen teaches. Um, and then we also have our GIS specialization, which is on Coursera. Um, our GIS specialization on Coursera is um, non-credit bearing. So those courses do not qualify for continuing education units or academic units. Um, and those courses, uh, our asynchronous, our courses offered through our general open enrollment program are synchronous courses. So meaning you're meeting with an instructor and getting that real-time interaction with your colleagues in course and also with your instructor. Good question. Uh, the cost and time for the professional, I'm sorry, the cost and time for the program will vary by course to course. Um, it just depends. So if you have a question specifically on an individual course, I can answer those questions via email. Um, how many classes does the program consist of? Um, our program consists of a variety of courses. It, it varies. Um, so it, it just depends on which course. There's a lot, there's a lot of courses that we offer and it's up to you as much as how many, um, what courses you're interested in learning about or topics you're interested in learning about within GIS. Uh, two more in the question and answers. Um, oh, uh, we have a question that says, uh, you took an introduction to GIS online a year ago. Would it benefit you to take it again from a different teacher? Um, it really depends on what learning platform you learn from. If you learned on ArcGIS 
pro. Um, I don't know if it would benefit you so much unless you're wanting to reinforce some skills. If you're looking to reinforce some skills from a year ago, then yeah, that would be fine to take a course, but um, yeah, just let me know. Hey, Ruth, can I just uh -huh. yeah, add to that? And yeah. that is that um, it's also kind of how much you remember. So mm -hmm. if, if you took a an online course and you did, you did a lot of hands-on work and you remember how to use Pro or something, then, you know, then I don't know that you need to, you know, retake it. But if, if it was very basic or you didn't, you know, you didn't actually learn a lot or you really feel like you forgot it all, I'd say do it again. Um, and another question is a JS program versus JS on Coursera, which should be done first. It really depends on the individual. Um, if you are a person that's more of a hands-on learner, like myself, um, I really thrive in a synchronous environment, meaning there's an instructor to kind of guide me through that process, um, and working through a specific set of tasks within a certain time frame. Um, I work better in that capacity. So in that sense, I would say our open enrollment program is beneficial. Uh, if you are looking to take GIS in an asynchronous format with meaning there's no set deadlines per se, um, you go at your own pace um, and you're not looking for as hands-on instruction, you're looking for very minimal, um, then I would say the GIS specialization on Coursera would be beneficial. It just varies by the individual, honestly. Uh, after completing all GIS courses from CPE, do you get a certification as a GIS specialist or a certificate certificate title? No, we do not. We do not currently have that right now. Uh, another question we have is how does it work for international employee with UC Davis? Karen, I don't know if you might be best equipped to answer that working within global affairs. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by international employee with UC Davis. So you are an international, you, you, do you live in Davis or I, I'm not quite, I, I don't quite understand the circumstances. Okay. The question is, how does it work for international employees with UC Davis? So maybe the question is, um, if you're an international student wanting to take courses within with CPE or UC Davis. Um, yeah, I mean, if you're an employee, yeah, I mean, again, I'm not, I don't know what the question is. Is it, is it asking about a discount or how, you know, you can, you can take a CPE class as, as a employee of UC Davis, right? Um, yes. So again, I, I don't, Ramandeep, maybe you can add some, a little more information so we can try to best address your question. Okay. Um, Ramdi, yeah, if you have any questions, um, go ahead and email us. I'll put that information at the end so you can feel free to reach out to us directly. Um, any more questions? Uh, oh, could you elaborate on what happens after all GIS courses are completed? Are there next steps in order to get a job in GIS? Um, there's a variety of different certification programs that you can do. I can send you a list of that. Um, or I can provide that actually in the um, discount code that I sent out later today. I can add that in there. I mean, one thing. One thing I just wanted to add is the value of, of having even, even a GIS concentration, not even necessarily a certificate, but to, mm -hmm. if you have an area that you're already doing, like land use planning or conservation or biodiversity or, uh, I, I don't know, um, economic development, any of those kinds of positions, if you add the GIS expertise, that can probably help you um, move into another role. Um, mm -hmm. So, and I would also recommend, if at all possible, try to get some kind of an internship. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have the, enough skills from taking all the GIS classes, you can probably find, you know, find a place that you could get, you, you know, like I always like to say, getting your foot in the door for a job, you know, just get mm -hmm. that connection where maybe you can do an internship and then, and that could turn into something more, more permanent. Yeah. And I, as we mentioned before, a, a certification really 
varies from employer to employer. Some employers would like it and some employers might not. As I mentioned before, we had a student that didn't need the certification process. So it really just varies from employer to employer. I think that's all of our questions. So we will move forward with our contact information. Uh, if you have any additional questions or if you have more questions that might come up later, please go ahead and reach out to our JS enrollment coach, Kathy Zhao, who's on the screen right now. Um, you can schedule a 15-minute appointment with her via calendly.com backslash Kathy Y Zhao. Um, and she can go ahead and answer your questions. You can also reach out to us. Um, I will put that in the chat for email. You can also reach out to us using um, at our lunar at edu email address. If you have any other questions. Thank you again, everybody, for taking the time to chat with us today, especially during your lunch break. We really appreciate it. And we'll be following up with some information uh, via Zoom later. So just keep an eye on your inbox. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great day. Hey, Allie. You're the host, so you're going to have to be the end one to end it. <laughs> <laughs>